We've spent the past year doing work on a project that I'm, I'm pleased to be able to share with you this morning. What we've been trying to do is to look at food systems through the lens of sustainability. And I'll explain in a moment what I mean by food systems and sustainability. But our goal here really was to try to find a way to do this that would provide specific recommendations, really detailed analysis, so that policymakers and businesses would be able to understand at the country level what they're doing well and where there's some room for improvement. Now we chose to do this by building an index, and most of you will know indices are not always very popular because someone finishes at the top and someone finishes at the bottom, and people at the top are much happier than those at the bottom. But nonetheless, we thought this was useful because done correctly, they do provide a very sharp filter into what countries are doing well. They're essentially a best practice mechanism. And at the same time, we also thought this was in keeping with the sustainable development goals, where countries, after all, have signed up to meet specific goals over time. So we thought that through the prism of food systems, this might be a good way of helping countries understand what they would need to do to meet certain SDGs that relate to food, like hunger and like sustainable production. So if you would go to the next slide, please. So what is the Food Sustainability Index? First, as Danielle said, let me just acknowledge uh, the support we had from the Barilla Center for Food and Nutrition. They made this possible, and they also helped us convene an advisory board where we were able to draw in a good deal of input from people all around the world. So ultimately, we looked at 25 countries. So we started with the G20, which is always a good group of, of diverse countries around the world, strong developed economies and developing countries. But we also added a few other countries in order to have a bit more geographic diversity. So we added Egypt and Israel and a few others so that we were looking at a fairly broad range of countries. Now, I mentioned food systems. We took a very specific approach to defining this. Some of you might recall the Milan Protocols, which were developed at the World Expo in 2015. So we defined, in this case, uh, food systems as looking at three things. One, nutrition. A second one around sustainable agriculture. And then the third one we looked at, in particular, food loss and food waste. So we felt that all three of those issues, food loss and waste, sustainable agriculture, and then nutrition, all obviously had sustainability components. So that's what we tried to look at. In terms of sustainability itself, we're defining that broadly as the capacity for countries to be able to maintain food systems without depleting or degrading natural resources and also without compromising the ability of future generations to have access to food. So we tried to be quite careful on our definitions. If you go to the next slide, please. Now, this is what the framework looks like. There's a lot here. I, I will not take you through this in any detail. There are about 60 indicators here. Suffice it to say that we looked at some of the traditional indicators that you'll be familiar with, ones that are developed by the Food and Agriculture Organization, or WHO, but we also developed quite a number of our own policy-related indicators. So we wanted to look here not just at what conditions were like for food systems in the countries right now, but also to look at whether countries were taking steps that would lead to improvements over time, so policy measures. So for example, within sustainable practices, we looked at everything from environmental impact of agriculture on land to, say, sustainable water withdrawal policies. Then on food loss and waste, we defined loss as occurring earlier in the food chain process. So loss would occur at the production or transportation levels. Waste occurs more at the consumer level. And then from a nutrition standpoint, we looked at a number of issues but focused a good deal on diets. One key point here is we, again, tried to look at both quantitative indicators, so hard numbers, and also qualitative or policy-driven indicators. So we tried to mix them both together to provide a, a more comprehensive viewpoint. Go to the next slide, please. I won't go over all the findings, but just three quick things that stood out for us as we looked at these results. One is, you may not be surprised to know, but food loss and waste is, is a huge problem almost everywhere. By the estimates that we've seen and that we calculated, at least a third of all the food that's produced in the world is either lost or wasted. Now, the good news, though, is we didn't find virtually any country among the 25 that did not recognize this and that was not taking this seriously. So it is a big problem, but it is not an unrecognized problem. So that holds out some hope that maybe in the future, as some of the policies begin to kick in, we might see the numbers improve. 
The second one around sustainable agriculture, I'll just highlight that most countries are really struggling with this balance over how to deal with the declining amount of arable land, especially the competition between land for food uses and land for non-food uses, say around biofuels. So that's stuck, stuck out as a major finding. And then the third, another one that, that's concerning, is the increase in what we would call premature obesity. Obesity used to be an issue that mostly occurred in the advanced economies, but it's now occurring more often and at an earlier stage in developing countries. So that's another point for concern. If you go to the next slide, please. In terms of the overall results, I'm not sure how visible these are, so I'll, I'll just walk you through them. This was ultimately a process for benchmarking countries. So as I mentioned, some countries did better than others. Looking across these indicators, the three countries that did the best were France, Japan, and Canada. But I want to emphasize that this is not about one number for each country. So we developed or collected about 1,500 data points. And if you look at the tools online, and by the way, we do have a website that allows you to look at this in some detail, you can slice and dice this data by policy, by environmental performance, by output variables, and by a lot of different ways. So even though there's a small group of countries that did well, a lot of countries in the middle and a few at the bottom, it is possible to drill down, and this was the whole point, for a country to look at each one of those indicators and say, well, fine, I may not be doing very well here, but I'm doing better in another area. So to make it easier to be able to identify sort of specific solutions. If you go to the next slide, please. I wanted to talk just for a few minutes about the US because we are here and the results for the United States I thought were particularly interesting. We had 25 countries here, the G20 and a few others. Uh, the United States, maybe unsurprisingly to you, does not do very well in a food systems or sustainability index. The US came out 11th out of 25th. Uh, I was actually surprised that the United States did that well. I would have expected it to do even worse. Among the advanced economies, so the rich Western economies, the, the France's and Canada's and Japan's and others, the US was dead last. So the US did better than a lot of emerging markets, but was absolutely worst among the developed economies, the rich economies. Two big problems, again, maybe not a big surprise. One of them was obesity, and the other one was food waste. Around obesity, the US was 19th out of 25 on overweight children next to the bottom on physical activity, next to the bottom on overnourishment, and absolutely dead last among all 25 on healthy diets. Worst on sugar consumption, worst on presence of fast food restaurants. Now, having said all that, not to make this sound too grim, I mentioned earlier that we looked at policy issues as well, and interestingly, the US tied for first in terms of policies meant to address these issues. So while the actual outputs were pretty poor, at least we saw evidence, whether you looked at the municipal level, city level, state level, whether at the federal level, USDA and others, that at least this problem seems to be recognized and there are quite a few initiatives underway, whether they're uh, uh, programs by USDA, say around, well, Good Samaritan laws, um, projects like pay as you throw and others around food waste. There's a lot that's being done right now. So our expectation would be, and I'm trying to be positive here, is that if we do this again in a few years, some of these programs will actually have an impact and will start to move the needle a bit. If you would just go to the last slide, please. I know I'm standing between you and lunch, so I'm going to be quick here as well. Just around food waste. So we talked a little bit about the problems with, with obesity. On food waste, as you can see there, the US was third from the bottom on food waste. I would emphasize to distinguish between food loss and waste. Lost occurs at the production level and it occurs at the transport level. The US actually does fine in terms of food loss. So the agriculture industry in the United States does not lose a lot of food at that level. The problem tends to be at the consumer level, at the waste end. So when I say the US is third from bottom, I'll be very specific and say that's around waste, not around loss. Overall though, how much? About one third, 30 to 40% are the best estimates that we could uh, obtain on food waste in the US. Again, the good news here is, much like with obesity, we saw a large number of initiatives that are targeted around food waste, and not just in the US, but globally as well. So it is a problem, but at least it is not an unrecognized problem. So our expectation is if we do this index again a year or two from now, and especially if we can do it, say, five years from now, 
our expectation would be that some of these programs would begin having an impact and then the inputs, the policy inputs, would start to have an impact on the outputs at the end of the day. So I'm going to leave it right there, but thanks very much for your time. And you should look for this online. The URL is foodsustainability.eiu for Economist Intelligence Unit, .eiu .com. So you'll find all the results there. Uh, if, if you're not too uh, allergic to Excel, there are some big workbooks there that you can look at and probe this in some detail. But the website itself is very accessible, and there's a good report you can read as well. So thanks very much for your time. Mm -hmm.